Primoz Roglic still wasn't able to accomplish his lifelong goal of winning the Tour de France, and in the current Pogacar era, this feat is harder to achieve than ever before. In this past season, there wasn't a day where Roglic was able to match Pogacar in the mountains, and no clear signs he's on the path there. However, Red Bull Bora Hansgrohe is still certain the 35-year-old hasn't hit his ceiling yet, and that he's capable of matching Poggy, despite the 10-year age difference. So, does Roglic actually stand a chance against his fellow Slovenian in 2025, or is it all just a fever dream? See, Red Bull Bora Hansgrohe has seen the best and the worst of Primoz Roglic already. They've seen him win the Vuelta and crash out of the Tour de France, all in a single season. But even though he's been dropped by Poggy multiple times this past season, the team still believes their veteran can prove to the world why he deserves to be in the Tour's Big Four and get a result many wouldn't expect based on his performance in the past few seasons. His team's head of performance said, Primoz can still be there with Pogacar and Evenepoel. If we get his build-up and preparation right, why can't he? We see Primoz's numbers are as good as ever, improving even. They've got a very interesting take on why they think that though, as they believe Roglic's relatively late switch to cycling gives him the ability to keep competing strongly against 26-year-old Pogacar and the rest of the big four. Upon hearing this, you're probably thinking, well, it just doesn't work that way, and the math doesn't seem to be mathing, but there's actually a reason they're saying this. Team staff over at Red Bull said, Primoz's age doesn't really mean anything. He's eight, ten years older than Pogacar and those guys, but as a cyclist, he's the same. He's probably been on a bike the same amount of time as them, and that plays a big role. We're not seeing age impact Primoz like other athletes. And to be honest, they're, they're right, at least partially. You don't see many 35-year-olds winning the Vuelta and improving in the ways he is. For those of you who don't know Roglic's history, he was actually a ski jumper till his early 20s and then transitioned to cycling. To be more specific, he was close to being 24 when he joined the peloton, which is the age at which Pogacar was already winning tours and all the other races, and also the age of one of his main rivals, Remco Evenepoel. Head of performance over at his team also said, it's about how much space there still is for development. Because Primoz is so young in cycling, he's not reached his ceiling. There's still room for him to develop, just like there is for Evenepoel Pogacar. We believe he can still even get better. We see that in his numbers, and that keeps us confident about the future. And, as we all like to say, numbers don't lie, as long as the one providing them doesn't. Essentially, over at Red Bull, they believe Roglic is young enough when it comes to cycling years to beat Pogacar and all the others in the Tour de France. That's why the experienced Slovenian became the centerpiece of the energy drink giant's bold move into professional cycling last winter, aiming to secure a Tour de France victory. If you think about it, and how much money Red Bull has on their hands, they would have definitely brought in some new talent if they didn't have some data to back up their claims about Roglic's age and potential. Teams with that much experience in the field simply wouldn't leave it down to chances and gamble it all on a single rider if they thought he's done for. But on the other hand, we've also got Roglic himself, who isn't half as confident and doesn't shy away from admitting there are guys much better than him in the peloton. When asked about modern cycling, he said, it's a completely different way of thinking, a completely different way of racing. It's a challenge for all of us older guys who still try to achieve good results. It's a challenge for me to be going with the steps of the younger generation to try to adapt to this style of racing. Just Pogacar, pretty much on his own, has taken things to a point where the peloton has to take action from the first kilometre, purely because of his long-range solo attacks nobody ever sees coming, especially when they come from 100 kilometres from the finish line. But, then again, in professional sports, you either adapt or get left behind, there's no place in between. From the research we've got access to today, aerobic capacity has the ability to grow up until you're in your early 40s, but a lot of other vital performance and recovery parameters start getting worse even before that. One of the main performance specialists over at Red Bull is known for working with elite level triathletes on iron distance levels, who were still breaking course records and celebrating insane wins even in their late 30s. That's also where part of the optimism comes from. He even said, some think it's a disadvantage to be getting older and not recovering so well. My experience in other sports disproves that. I've seen athletes bringing their best performances even in their late 30s. I know Primoz can be the same. 
But then again, Primoz doesn't only have to improve. He also has to mentally overcome the big disaster that happened in 2024, which can sometimes be a hard thing to rebound from. Professional cycling is changing rapidly, and both speeds and power outputs have never been as high. Even before he had to withdraw from the 2024 Tour de France due to a crash, he was already kind of always looking half a wheel behind Pogacar and the other favourites. He did come back and win the Vuelta later on though, but everyone has been taking that red jersey with a grain of salt, simply because Red Bull's victory likely only happened due to the absence of Pogacar, Vingegaard and Evenepoel. But still, we can take it as somewhat of a starting point and a nice confidence booster if nothing else. As Roglic's trainer said, the tour was the biggest disaster for our whole team, not just for Primoz. Everybody put in 120%, but the results were zero. The crash really affected Primoz mentally and physically. That's why it was so impressive how he came back in the Vuelta. Everyone came home from Spain exhausted, but motivated. It was a crucial result for us. It showed what's possible for us and Red Bull next year and beyond. Regardless of what happened at the Vuelta, though, it's hard to ignore the fact that Red Bull came into professional cycling mainly to win the biggest race of them all, the Tour de France. It just happens to be the one race Roglic hasn't been able to win to save his life. Every year, there was something that prevented him from doing it. And just when he's come close, Pogacar stepped up and ruined the dream. We have to respect one thing, though. He keeps on trying. Even though the schedules haven't been released publicly yet, Roglic will likely be back at the Tour in 2025, ready for redemption. In fact, Roglic and his longtime coach, Mark Lamberts, are already working to fix any weaknesses and prepare him for new Grand Tour challenges. He's known to have suffered quite a lot on the Queen stages with multiple consecutive mountains, which are prime terrain for Pogacar and Vingegaard, and also where they've been able to get those solo victories with huge time gaps. It's the one thing he needs to improve to be able to beat those two. About that, Red Bull's performance coach said Primoz and his coach have been looking at this since when he was at Jumbo Visma. They recognised it had to be improved for him to be competitive in the Grand Tours. They've been working on that ever since, and we can see in the data that has improved. I would say Primoz is a much more complete rider now. But of course, the others also developed. In the end, the question will be where everyone is at the start of a Grand Tour, and if they can be better at the end of it. During their winter training camp next month, the Red Bull performance team will plan Roglic's early season schedule. Major adjustments might be coming his way. They've been talking about refining Roglic's race calendar and altitude training to ensure he's at peak form for the Lille Grand Depart. No matter the changes, though, the focus and goal will remain the same. If they get everything right for him and he manages to stay healthy early on, there's no reason why he couldn't compete with the best and perhaps even win the Tour. So, what do you think? Could Roglic still win the Tour de France, or are his times simply over? Let us know in the comments down below.